Welcome back to Run Free and Live. Today's run was pretty incredible, but also pretty scary at the same time. What I mean by that is today was a fast run. So today is Thursday, and in two days from now, I'll be doing a long run. So how this works is Monday is a fast run, Thursday is a fast run, and Saturday is a long run. So Tuesday and Wednesday are going to be your recovery days easy. Friday is going to be the same thing. And then Sunday is going to be just an easy, relaxed day. I might do biking, but no running because it's an off day. That's my schedule for right now. So this morning, I got up like normal for, for the work. It's 3 a.m. So right now, it's, it's maybe some of you are going to be like, that's crazy. But yes, in order to get to work on time and make sure I have enough time to stretch, uh, stretch, do my upper body, which is about 20 minutes, and then get to from my place where I live to the track do my workout, travel back, cool down, shower, get get everything out the door. 3 a.m. is the ideal time. That also gives me a buffer zone for getting my post, my post to Instagram set up, and on the post on all the social medias for that picture of the day, so that I can upgrade. So that's what I do. <laughs> anyway, so I woke up this morning, 3 a.m., and I woke up before the alarm, which happens a lot, and. There was no rain this morning when it first started, but there was a little wind, and you couldn't hear too much. It was kind of a little whistling a little bit, not too much, but it was mostly where I lived with the houses. I happen, I always look out the window because I get to see if it's raining or not because where I'm, where I'm living here in Washington, in the Seattle area, they always say it rains a lot. <laughs> now, I've been up here a few months now, and it's rained. It's only a lot more than it does in Vegas, Arizona, or even San Diego, definitely. But it's not as much as I, I was led to believe or people say. I think people over-exaggerate the rain here. However, this morning was very interesting because it was the first time running on a track because I just started this whole track pro- process this week. Uh, it takes my second run. The first run was on this past Monday, which is the same day I started this whole podcast. So I'm only, I'm only what? Today was day – today is day four. Four day of the podcast and also four day of this new training program getting into it. If, of this week and of going forward looking out the window i saw the wind and i i didn't see the wind but basically you saw the trees and they were moving and it gave me the same feeling i had when i lived in vegas for the couple years i lived in vegas you would never assume well first of all you would never assume that vegas is a very windy place it's not called the windy city (laughs) it's not however when you visit there I don't, I don't suspect that you're actually visiting the outside. Now, there's things to do outside, I'm sure, you know, and you can go hiking out in the mountains and stuff like that. But the wind that you do see in Vegas is not up in the mountains. You do see the wind down in the city because the Vegas is, sits on the lowest part of where the area, it's almost like a, a bowl. I call the Vegas a bowl. I've gone to different parts of Vegas because it's not that hard to drive from one place to the other. It doesn't take that long. You drive around the city. It's not that as big as you think it is. It's pretty small. I get from one to the other, probably 30 minutes to the other side, as long, as long as you go on the outside. If you go through, straight through from one to the other, it takes longer because of the traffic and the lights. But where the strip is set, it's in paradise, because I don't know if you know, but the strip is not all in Vegas. It's in paradise. The actual Las Vegas is more than towards the north. But anyway, where the strip is set, that's the lowest point. It's around like, what, 2,100 feet? Where I used to live was around 26, 2,700 feet, roughly there. So it goes up as you go out towards the inner, out towards the edges. It's like a bolt, basically. The wind funnels in down there, and the wind gets very brutal. Where you're looking at the trees, it's whipping. And it's clear sky. <laughs> no storm, no storms coming, and it just stops. And then there'll be days where you're looking at your phone and you're seeing the wind. Right now it says wind three miles an hour. So it's not much going on. Then it says by 1 a.m. the wind's at 25 miles an hour. And you're like, what? I don't see anything. Nothing's going to change. There's going to be no change in cloud, no change in barometer probably. I mean, I can't remember the barometer on it up or down, but not much. Sure enough, come that time at at 1 or 2 in the morning, the wind starts whipping. Do not know why, except for what I told you about where the bolt. My own theory is the where Vegas sits, 
coming down from Utah, and the, it's, it's, per, it's a perfect funnel for the wind to come in because it changes the molecules. And the worst part about living in Vegas was when you, I did run, if I ran it around 3 in the morning, it'd be the best time because it'd be quiet. Right around 4.35 in the morning, as the sun starts to come up, you start the molecules start warming. I noticed the wind started picking up more and more. It was getting bad. This is one of the reasons why I chose to start running inside. I used to run at LVAC, which is Las Vegas Athletic Clubs. There's a bunch of different gyms around the city. It's actually pretty cheap. But anyway, they have an indoor track. And some of, every track is different size. Some are six laps a mile. Some are five and a half. There's one actually at five and a quarter. And I think there's one close to seven laps is a mile. But that track was helpful because you could actually run. I used to run 100 and I think 20 laps, 15 miles. No, 110. Anyway, that was a way to get out of the wind. And a lot of people ran on it. And I used to use it a lot for sprinting, for jogging, long runs, road cover runs. It gets boring, but it works. Anyway, back to the story at hand when it comes to today. So I'm looking at this wind. And the first reaction I had was, oh, my God, this sucks. I don't like this. Because I kept thinking is my goal is to make the world record in half marathon. 54 minutes and 59 seconds, a 411 mile pace. Insane pace, right? <laughs> I know. However, I got to get going on this plan, which means I have to take every day and use it wisely, which means if it's recovery day, use that. Active recovery, which means I'm running but not fast, use it. If I'm just recovering nothing, use it. But the fast days, long days, whatever it is, they have to run, they have to run outside. I tried doing the whole thing of running fast days indoors. I was getting good results, but then you also start peaking because it's a little different. The faster you go, it's the harder it is to maybe achieve up. Uh, excuse me. The faster you go on the treadmill, you might have some more issues. I had some issues with the treadmill, and it was very difficult. But I found running outside is a lot easier when it comes faster because you can adjust your pace. Because when you're going up on the treadmill, you have to press one button. You might, it might, if you press to go faster by point one, just pressing the button once, you might, it might be five seconds faster per mile. I don't want to do that. On a track, I can go a second or two seconds per mile faster or run it how I feel. And I have my GPS watch going. I have a bunch of different GPS watches, but that's okay. So I'm looking at this wind and it just, it's, I'm not terrified, but now I'm concerned and it's like, it's bothering me. However, it didn't bother me too, too much just yet. <laughs> not until I actually started um, working out. So the first thing I did when I got up is I get ready. I try to war warm up, you know, 10, 15 minutes before I start stretching. And then I do my whole full body stretch, which is about 50 minutes worth. During that time, I kept telling myself, don't worry about the when it'll die down. It'll do all these, all these things in my head. It'll die down. It won't be there. It's not going to be as bad as I think it is. I can't control it. I got this. We'll adjust. All, that. all these things I kept telling myself in the head. A good, good things. However, when I got downstairs, because I live in a two-story building, when I got downstairs, and I was working on, I do my push-ups area because I like to do push-ups. It's hard to do push-ups in the carpet. I need, there's, a, there's a flat floor down there, which it's like hardwood where I like to do a push-up set. And that's where I started doing my push-up workout. It's it's <laughs> it's right line of sight to the door, the door and, the, and the window. So the door to outside is glass, and so is the the uh, windows. And it's, it's like not much change it's like you have the door then you have the windows and there's only a little bit maybe an inch not even an inch of so um, wood between that and i can see outside and i have this big tree in my ba the backyard where it, it's like pine. it looks like pine but i'm not sure if it, but it's, it's tree it's huge it's about what, 100 feet up it's it's big right it's probably not 100 feet up but it's it's, it's probably 50 feet but it's huge and it's a lot of branches and stuff i look up as i'm doing push-ups in between my sets you know resting period you know and the trees whip going up and down big and i'm like oh no and i'm thinking like oh no if i run in this then i'm not gonna hit the pace i want to hit and i've noticed in the past when you don't hit the when you go up for your workout and you don't you try to go fast you don't hit it sometimes you go backwards in your workouts that was a concern i had of mine to go backwards what i mean by that is say you're running a six mile pace and you do this for four miles 24 minutes right you need to keep hitting those paces every so often in order to stay at those paces. If you don't run those paces, eventually your body will stop being adapted to that pace. It's like lifting weights. You stop lifting weights, your body gets rid of the muscle you banged up. Muscles. If you stop lifting weights, 
your muscles that were built up to lift those strengths. Can't talk straight, sorry. When you lift muscles, <laughs> when you lift up weights, you get muscles to lift a certain poundage. If you don't lift those weights those for that size often or you wait too long, eventually your muscles will deteriorate because your body doesn't need it to get rid of it, and then you can't lift that muscle up. Same thing when it comes to running. If you don't go at the pace that you are capable of running um, every so often or you take too long in between, between one fast session and another session, your body will start getting rid of that ability which is why people who are who are in shape they're doing maybe a seven minute mile six minute mile and they take off six weeks now they're running in an eight minute mile pace like god oh, i was doing great a month ago because your body got rid of that ability because it said it didn't need it why am i keeping it and so it just gets out of shape right that's a that's a really dumb not dumb not, not dumb but it's really watered down version of what's going on there so th that's my concern this is my concern when i'm looking at this wind and back and forth like i'm saying it's okay. I, don't worry about it. And I kept seeing it and I was kept getting concerned. And what got me a little ring of hope during this whole time was there'd be times where it was, when it, when it was going big and you could see the big movements of the tree branch. So I'm talking about a foot or two up and a foot or two down. It would go down and all of a sudden it would stop. So then I'm like, Oh, it stopped. Great. And then a few minutes later, it's doing it again. And then a few minutes later, it, the wind would stop. And I'm like, is it gusting? What's going on? So I, don't know exactly how it's going and everything. So it looks like it's it's gusting where it, it, wind goes and it stops, but it's going consistently every few minutes or every 30 seconds or however it's going. So I'm building up into my head this negativity going, oh, you can't do this. If you don't do, if you, you can't do this run. If you don't do this run, then this, you won't be able to keep your fast pace. If you don't keep your fast pace, then you'd be off in your schedule. If you get off in your schedule, then the idea of you making the Olympic trials, uh, making gold medals, um, even breaking the record if you want to do will take um, more time or even if you ever do it. And it's a lot of negativity. And that negativity is not helpful for anybody. It's not your, myself. And I know myself that uh, when I get negative in the past, it doesn't lead very good roads. Because then you start thinking, oh, what's the point of doing something? And then next thing you know, you sabotage yourself by doing things you shouldn't do, like e eating bad. Maybe you drink too much. Maybe you do drugs or whatever it is that is your vice that causes you to get out of shape. You don't sleep. Next thing you know, you don't run for three days or, or whatever the case would be. So that was going through my head. And I was thinking of all the ways of why this is a bad thing and what's going to cause me to have all these problems and everything. And, and then I realized... Um, right before I went out there to go outside, get to my car to go to the track, I stood stood at the door, and I'm thinking to myself, "Is there's a wind? Okay, I can't control the wind. Nothing I can do about it. However, this goal I'm going after, do I really want it? That's so why I've asked myself. Yes, I do really want it. Now, are you willing to fight for it? That's the question I had to ask myself again. And I'm like, yes. Are you sure? And I hesitated a little bit because I'm like, I could, I could, I'm like, well, do I really want it? Yes. I would like to have this, something else going for it. And then why'd I hesitate about, are you sure you really want this? Because maybe deep, deep down, I still have reservations on if I can do something or if I believe myself enough. And I'm like, you know what? I, I made the decision. I'm like, you know what? Screw it. We've been down this road before years ago. I should have done this over a decade ago with this run. I had the idea I'm doing right now is something I came up with 10 years ago. It should have already been done. I should already be running uh, low fours for, for half marathon. I should be doing that. I already know how to do this. I've already achieved some of the success already. I didn't get down to the race paces I needed to because I sabotaged myself. So now that I've, I understood it, and I've been down that road. Do I want to repeat that road I went down before? No, I don't. And that was a way for me to snap my mind and go, okay. I went down the road before of all this negativity, letting it give into it and saying, poor me, woe is me, and all that stuff. And I saw that road because I, I lived that road years after that. Did I like that road? <laughs> oh, oh, no, 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 no. I hated that road with a passion and fire. And I turned on Tony Robbins's – I love YouTube. It helps, all right? I got the, the I am the voice because I went to his uh, UPW and it helped. And then bring me, bring me alive. I'm like, I am the voice, you know, that, vo that, that, that I am the voice and fill the whole body, make, make your move, 
power move, power face, breathe heavily, get get that state. I changed my physiology like he talks about. And I was doing that because I was about to make a decision, maybe negative or bad decision in a bad state. Because even though I worked out, I was doing good. I was, I, was about, I was still in a bad mindset. And that's the key. I hope you guys take away from this episode, even though I'm, I'm talking long-winded here, is I was on a bad negative mindset, which was causing this issue. That was the problem. And all because the way I was trying to control something, I put a, a obstacle in my way because I perceived something. There's runners out there who run out here. There's, there's high schools. There's colleges. They have NCAA out here. They do this stuff out here. They have meets. They go around. They do cross country. They track. There's people out here that go to colleges that grow up here. and They go other states and they go overseas and they become great. Why can't I do it? So I put a me- mental block in front of me and didn't even realize it. But that's what I was doing. Putting a mental block and telling I couldn't do something. And I don't really truly believe that you cannot do something. Anything's possible. I mean, 150, 200 years ago, when America was being settled, over 200 years ago, actually, 1700s, if someone said, we're going to the moon, they'd laugh at you and go, how are you going to do that? And look at us now. We've been to the moon, right? Electric car, they laughed at us over 20 years ago before Musk did his thing. Now he's, on, he's looking at getting us to Mars. So truly, if we do think about it, what is really impossible? And it made me think a little bit that these mental blocks we put in front of ourselves and the mental block I was doing to myself, I was looking at wind and making this whole story about how this one issue is going to affect my running, which in turn is going to affect my life. And this whole like 10 year progress, I came up and made this whole idea up. Some of it, I don't even want to explain what I came up with, but it's just like, it was this whole negative thing. And that was something that I created. And I didn't understand that before. And it just, it dawned on me that I can't, it's, it's crazy. I did this to myself and, and why, why did I do it? I did it because it's my go-to. It's the comfortableness. It's me in the comfort zone. That's my go-to. It's my, it's a habit I have that I've formed and I'm, I have to break it. So what did I do? Now, all this stuff I'm telling you right now is not something I, I stood at that moment. It's something I stood as the next 20, 30 minutes went on. But to get me out that door, I, I got myself in a state because I just like I was kind of thinking negative about getting out the door and going to the run because I was like, oh, I should go to the tre- treadmill. I'm like, we've been to the treadmill. That's not going to work as much as I want to. It might work, but it might send me back because I still have to test it out because I don't have my paces locked in on the treadmill that much as I thought I did. But I do have a, a locked in more on the track. If I go to the track, maybe if I just run a little slower and I adjust to the wind, I mean, I might not get the best run out there, but I'll get out there at least and run something. I mean, yeah. I mean, not every – the what got me out there the best is – I'm trying to explain it, but I know I'm I'm stumbling over my words. The, what got me out the door was this. If I don't go out there, can I run tomorrow, which is Friday? I could. I could. I, I could. That's three days now of easy run. I could, I could run fast on – Friday. But what if the same thing happens tomorrow? And this, we're still dealing with the wind. We're still dealing with all that stuff, right? Well, now I'm in the same boat as I am today. But then Saturday was my long run. Now, do I push my long run or do I skip it? I mean, what do I do? And so now there's a domino effect of problems. So what I told myself is, you know what? Let's go out there and do it. Because I can't change anything. And 10 years is going to go by. There's and I can't do anything about what happens today. But in 10 years, I can. I want to be somewhere. But it starts with today. If, t- if today I go out there and the run is not as good, well, then it didn't go out well good because not everything can be good, right? Just even, some, even some off runs, when you do easy run, even it's like 9, 10 mile pace, and it's easy because you maybe run a 6 mile pace or you run a 9 mile pace and your easy run is like 11 miles. Sometimes those runs are bad because you ha- you're sick or you're just tired or whatever. They just feel bad. Or you break up the Legos. You can't control those days. But you can go out there and try, and then if something goes wrong, you get back to the house, you have your day, go sleep at night, and the next morning you try again. That was basically what got me out. I said, I'll try. I can adjust to what I feel is the best because I can only make decisions in the moment with all the knowledge I have of this moment for my life. And that's what I did. So I I went out there. As I'm walking out to the car, I can feel the wind. I'm like, okay, 
we'll just deal with it. Got to the track. And I'm at the track, and I started doing my warm-up. And what I noticed at the track is some of the fear I had before about what this could mean, what could happen with this wind, I started noticing was more in my mind. Because as I started running around, the, around you notice how wind is not all around you? It feels like it is, but it's coming from a direction. And there's two ways to go around a track. You can go counterclockwise or clockwise. And I noticed when I was going around the track, one way was was more wind than the other. And that's what I noticed. I'm like, okay, so I and I said, okay, let's try it. So I, I ran in the center, you know, the first the first lane one basically where it's centered to the, you get to the track. Then you can go to lane eight, which is on the outside of the track, right? I like running the outside because it gives you more to run, um, more um, track to run on, and you're not turning as much. That's what I like to do. But I told myself, if I run in the center or more towards the center on certain laps, I'll, I'll get less wind. I'll deal with the wind less. So as I'm, as I'm, 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 as I'm going around the track, I'm going counterclockwise. I'm going clockwise. So test out which, which way is better. Is, is, going one, is going clockwise better because there's less wind or is it clockwise? Turns out this way around, um, counterclockwise was the best way to do it. And I noticed that only a little, over, only only about maybe 100, 100 feet or 100 meters, maybe a little less than 100 meters, was the wind. So three fourths of the track, I had a little bit of wind on the ends, and then a straightaway of no wind at all. So what I decided to do was, okay, let's try this, let's go with it. And then if the wind did pick up a little bit too much, I was gonna cut in to where the wind is to the centers to get around the wind as quick as possible to get to the outside. And then when I get to the side that had less wind, I go to the outside of the track. And that way I can get more of that for longer, more of that no wind side for longer time. And I'll just cut it. And if you go around, because remember, I have my Garmin on me. I'm with, the, I'm with, the, I'm with the, my Garmin watch and it's going to tell me how long this ends. So I don't have to worry about counting laps. I'm just trying to get the, the miles in. So let it go. And that's what I did. And believe it or not, there were some laps where the wind was terrible. I'm pushing in. And there were other laps where it wasn't as bad. It was manageable. And the rain came in and it went. And it came and it went as this run went. And I was so amazed and so surprised because the first mile, I, I ran on Monday, uh, 48, uh, 648 the first lap, uh, excuse me, 6 minutes, 48 seconds the first mile, 6, I think 46, a uh, second mile, and then it would drop going from there. I ran this first mile in 646. So it was faster than Monday, but I was dealing with wind. And I was like, wow. And it was dropping like, like normal, it's supposed to. Because I, I like doing negative splits when it comes to these tempo runs. So that way I don't blow everything out in the first mile or two. And you're trying to hold on too much, you know, get as much out of the workout. One day I'll explain um, how, I, how I do my fast runs. But I noticed that I was getting through this workout. It was actually doing better than I thought. And I, I finished the run seven seconds faster than Monday's run with no wind. And going back to where I, I talked about where I figured out it was all in our head. I came up with this idea of this wind being a problem. And there may be one day where this wind is going to be a problem where I just can't do anything. It's going to be one of those bad days. But if I never went out there and I never tried to, t to attack this wind or just see what happened, I would have never known. I'd be still going, poor as me, woe as me. Oh, I'm... it's a negativity that's so horrible to deal with. Don't fall in the trap of what your brain tells you. Um, the good thing about what I've been doing um, since I moved to the Washington area is trying to tell myself, or excuse me, when my brain comes up with a thought or an emotion that comes up from what the gurus tell me, what is that telling you? So if I have a thought, what does that thought mean? If I have an emotion, fear, anger, hate, um, sadness, happiness, whatever it is, what is it about? Ask questions about it. And that's what I did this, this morning. I asked questions on, I have fear. fear. What am I fearful? Why am I fearful of this wind? Because I'm afraid if I go out there, it's going to sabotage the run and I won't get a good run. And then I might go backwards and not be able to run the 648 that I ran on Monday. It might be now 650 come the following Monday. So it feels like I went backwards in my running. But that's a fear. Okay, so I acknowledge it. That's my fear. That's my concern. And then you have to ask, and ask the next question. Is it 
something you truly know? Is it justified? Can you justify education? Is this set in stone? No. Well, then why do you believe it? Do you believe it? No, I don't believe it. It's not possible yet. We don't know for sure. So why should we have worry about you? And the worry is just the sense of fear and anxiety of something that hasn't happened yet. So I am basically living in the future, having a hurt, having worry, having all this pent up um, stress level added to my body for no reason, mentally. And when I get done the workout today, it was so amazing that I completed it. My fears, has, my fear and worry did have some, there's some truth to it. It was, it was not all dumbfounded. It had some good stuff to it. But it shows me that next time I go, I should go out there. And just like I said in my Instagram post, can't control the weather. Can't control the rain, the wind, the snow, the storms. Can't control any of that. What I can control is what I do to it. How I think. I can have my, my thoughts that come out right away. And then I can make it, their impulse. So many thoughts that come, they come right away. However, I can choose my action. I could have chose to stay in bed. I could have chose to go to the, go to the treadmill. I could have chose to, to whine, complain. I could have chose to do nothing. We have choice of what we want to do. Nothing is impossible. Our bodies are capable of more than we know which is what I've been learning for a long time, and I'm putting it to the test. I, I, I hope this wasn't too long-winded for this, but I wanted, I wanted to emphasize I have fears as much as everyone else does. I had worry concerns. So this guy you're listening to who's going on, to, going on this journey uh, from, bo- the bottom, from the bottom of darkest of places to the top of the mountain, wasn't born this way. Had to work and earn it and get at it and go after it. And I and don't think I don't have my own fears and doubts. I do. But I'm choosing my mind what to focus on. Hope you have a good day and thank you for listening.